gentlemen, you're watching, yes, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. is clear right there and so is the destination Yankee Stadium in the Bronx and it's time for baseball as the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball it's the New York Yankees against the Baltimore Orioles in the middle game of a three game set from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx New York hello everybody and welcome to Yankees baseball along with John Flaherty I'm Michael Kay. Well, the Yankees unleashed the power again last night, a game that they had to win. They won, and they won with the big fly. Well, they did it again, and Alfonso Soriano is right in the middle of the mix again last night. In the fourth inning, he takes a little cutter on the outer half, and he drills it to right center field. His 12th home run as a New York Yankee. What a great acquisition by Brian Cashman. And then the veteran Ichiro Suzuki in the fifth after Sabathia had given up a lead again. A two-run shot, his seventh of the year. That turns out to be the game game-winning swing of the bat for the New York Yankees last night. Hey, let's look deeper into Soriano. This has been a great month for him in 27 games, 11 home runs, and 31 ribbies tied for most home runs and ribbies this month with Miguel Cabrera. Not too bad. Let's take a look now at today's New York Lottery pitching matchup. For the Orioles, it's Scott Feldman, 11-9, 3.87. And for the Yankees, Ivan Nova, 7-4, 3.14. Last time we saw him, John, he helped the Yankees stop getting swept by the Rays. Well, he picked up the win in that ball game for win number seven, but he was not great. He walked six in that game against Tampa, but the curveball is the one pitch that has been there consistently for him since he came back from the minor leagues. Fastball with a little bit of movement is able to get a double play, but for Ivan Nova, even not at his best last time out, was able to pick up win number seven. Don't know if Ivan Nova will give them a full nine innings, and if he doesn't, nobody's really afraid because the Yankee bullpen since the middle of August has been the best in baseball. When we come back, Meredith Barakovich will talk about the pen next on Yes. You know, you can start with Mo, and then you just kind of work your way back. And contributions from from a lot of different guys. And you think about what David Huff has done his last couple outings, the importance of that. So uh, they've been very good and very important to our success. The Yankees are hoping to get some distance from Ivan Nova today, but Joe Girardi can rest assured if he needs them, the bullpen is there to back him up. 
John Flaherty and Michael Kay are coming back with lineups. First pitch baseball right here on Yes. Thing ever event. Visit bwdealer.com. By Kettle One. Gentlemen, this is vodka. Please drink responsibly. And by Dodge. Take advantage of great summertime deals at the Dodge Summer Clearance Event going on now. Kind of an overcast Saturday afternoon. Very humid here in the Bronx. Yankees have taken the field. Nova taking his warm up tosses. So why don't we take a look at the Orioles starting lineup? Orioles are 71 and 62. They'll lead off their left fielder, Nate McLeod. Batting second and playing third, Manny Machado. The first baseman, Chris Davis, bats third. Cleaning up the center fielder, Adam Jones. Matt Weider's back in the lineup. He'll catch, he'll bat fifth. The right fielder, Nick Markakis, hits sixth. Batting seventh and playing shortstop, J.J. Hardy. Wilson Betemi is a DH. He's going to bat eighth and batting ninth. And playing second base is the veteran, Brian Roberts. Uh, lineup for Baltimore going to face Yvonne Nova. He's had a very nice year after coming back from the minor leagues. We'll take a look at his numbers on the season. Seven and four, three point one four ERA, and we'll look at our pitcher scouting report brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. He's had a nice August, undefeated, three and zero with two no decisions, and he's really come a long way. When you think he walked six, his last outing against Tampa Bay, he was still able to pick up win number seven, two earned runs over six and two thirds. And the bottom line, the Yankees need a win today, but they also need their bullpen to get catch a little bit of a break. Von Nova looking to go deep into this game. All right, you're all set up. Nova's ready. McClough is ready. And let's do it here in the Bronx. First pitch is outside, and we are underway. Chad Fairchild is the home plate umpire. The 1 0 to McClough. Grounded to second. Cano right there to Overbay. Right. Let's check out the Yankees defense presented by Geico. We start with Overbay at first base. A last minute switch. Alex Rodriguez was playing third scratch with flu like symptoms, so Reynolds took over at third, moving from first, and Overbay slid in. Jeter's at short, Cano's at second in the outfield. It's Granderson, Gardner, and Ichiro left to right. Don't worry, Soriano's the DH, and Stewart behind the plate with Nova on the mound. Here is Manny Machado. He takes a strike. We look back to Nova's last start. The velocity wasn't as great as we have seen early in the year, but the curveball was still a big time factor in that game. When you think about the fact that he walked six in that game and was only was still able to give up two earned runs and six and two thirds. Never would have been able to do that at the beginning of the year. He's just a totally different pitcher coming back from the minor leagues. That pitch right there might be one of the reasons why he's been so effective. As he whispers the outside corner with the breaking ball one and two. And Machado down on strikes. Hey. 
Take a look at the curveball breakdown. 35.4% of the time, 68 strikeouts. Opponents only 164. I mentioned the velocity his last outing with the fastball was down, but was still able to get some swings and misses with that curveball. So here's Chris Davis leads the major leagues with 47 home runs. And the Orioles lead the major leagues as a team with 178 home runs. Just one home run yesterday off the bat of Danny Valencia. Cano playing short right field. Jeter shades up the middle and Reynolds way off the line at third. For Chris Davis. Here's the fastball. Two and two. A good pitch right there. Chris Stewart wanted that fastball up, and you saw only 93. We've seen Nova at about 95, 96 earlier. Maybe setting up that big breaking ball. That's what happened as Davis swings over the top. A strong first inning for Ivan Nova. One, two, three, two strikeouts. Orioles nothing. Yankees coming to bat. Will take his turn against the Bombers. Let's take a look at the Yankees starting lineup presented by Lexus. Yankees are 71 and 63, and they lead off their center fielder, Brent Gardner. The captain, the shortstop, Derek Jeter, bat second. The second baseman, Robinson Cano, will hit third. Alfonso Soriano will DH today. He'll clean up. In left field, it's Curtis Granderson batting fifth. The number six hitter is a third baseman, Mark Reynolds. Ichiro Suzuki in right field will bat seventh. Batting eighth and playing first base, Lyle Overbay. And Chris Stewart's going to catch, and he's going to bat ninth. And that lineup for the New York Yankees is going to face right-hander Scott Feldman. Let's do the Texas Rangers, Chicago Cubs now here in Baltimore. You see 11 and 9, 3.87 combined with the Cubs and Baltimore. We'll look at our pitcher scouting report, which is brought to you by your Try Honda dealers an early acquisition on July 2nd from the Cubs and kind of had mixed results over here four and three with a four point five six ERA as a Baltimore Oriole and had some high pitch counts lately only able to get through about five innings. So the Yankees going to try to get into the middle of that bullpen and he will cut his fastball forty six percent of the time his last outing. So only a half game now separates the Yankees and the Orioles after the Yankees victory last night. So if they can win today that's one of the teams that have to pass out of the way. And last night really had a lot of electricity here at the stadium a nice win for the Yankees offensively picking up Sabathia who did not have a great outing again. But one of those wins you really hope to build on today and there's a look at the wild card standings. Yankees just four back in the loss column. Pitch inside the garden. And the 1 0 from Felton. Grounded, inside first, and down the right field line. 
Gardner rounds first. He's going to second. Marquez digs it out of the corner, and Gardner's going to stop at second with a double. Why don't we check out the Orioles' defense presented by Geico? We start with Marquez in right field. Got a good. Caraman fielded the ball quickly, getting it in, holding Gardner to a double. Jones in center and McLeod over and left. Go the other way in the infield. It's Machado, Hardy, Roberts, and Davis. Third to first. The Ironman Weeders behind the plate. Feldman is on the mound. Well, a nice start for the Yankees with that leadoff double with Brett Gardner. You kind of build off what you did last night. Eight runs. Already some excitement here in the first inning. Here's Derek Jeter. And he bunts in the air and foul. Kevin Long, the hitting instructor, giving a little scouting report on Feldman. It's going to be a fastball that's straight. A lot of cutters, like I mentioned in that scouting report. He will throw a curveball. He will pitch backwards, does not have overpowering stuff. That would be considered a fourth or fifth guy in a rotation. And there's a strike on the outside corner 0 2 and Jeter turns around to talk with Fairchild. Let's look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow T. See those clouds 81 degrees 68 percent humidity wind 9 miles per hour. And there's no no rain expected during the game but there is rain expected sometime this evening. Right now partly cloudy. Borderline low strike right there. Last night's home plate umpire Paul Schreiber had a low strike zone. See Derek's numbers against Feldman. A little surprised he tried to bunt the first two times, but we've seen Derek in the past when he's not feeling good about a swing, will opt to do the sacrifice bunt in that situation. Check swing, ground ball to Davis, and he gets the job done as Gardner moves a third. Yankees baseball available in Spanish by hitting the SAP button on your remote. SAP is brought to you by Infinity. Gardner's double that opened up this inning, his 133rd hit, that's a new career high. He had 132 hits in both 2010 and 2011. Here's Cano. Orioles will give up the run. Infield is back. One and oh. Cano, a 400 hitter over his last 23 games. He came back last night from that left hand contusion after a couple of days off and did not miss a beat. Couple of base hits, couple of RBIs. In a real comfortable situation right here. Head in the count 2 and 0. You mentioned earlier Feldman, not an overpowering guy, kind of tries to trick you a little bit, pitch backwards. Fastball count right here. Expect him to go with some sort of off speed pitch. And that one is driven into right field. It's a base hit. It goes to the wall. Scoring easily is Gardner. And Cadell picks up an RBI double and the Yankees lead 1 0. Well, we saw the numbers, how hot he has been lately. A couple of hits last night in the first at bat. It is an off speed pitch, a curveball, and a fastball count. And Robbie out in front a little bit, but you see how long that bat stays through the hitting zone. Able to keep it fair instead of hooking it foul. A double and an RBI, and the Yankees are on the board early. Here's Soriano. He 
the inside move by Feldman chasing Cano back. Soriano in his last eight games here in the Bronx has had six home runs. 28 overall. Check that 29 overall. With 86 ribbons. You mentioned all those home runs from Soriano, and he's he's really done a nice job driving the ball the other way to that short porch. And Baltimore making a little adjustment there, throwing a fastball in on his hands, pops him up. Probably going to be seeing a lot more of those pitches, trying not to let him extend his arms and drive the ball the other way. Here's Granderson. As much of a shift this afternoon as Baltimore had last night with Granderson. All three infielders or the shortstop was to the right of second base. Machado was more at shortstop. Curtis laid down a couple of bunts last night trying to negate that shift. Of the, uh, the overcast covering above. Help it takes a long time. On the previous foul ball, he was ready to throw it back. I think he's at Wrigley Field in the bleachers. And the one, two, two, and two. Well, you're watching Feldman here in the first inning. Cut fastballs, curve balls. He has been working on a changeup, trying to introduce that more into his game plan. Does not have a lot of confidence with it. So if you're a Yankee hitter, it's fastball cutter at about 89, 90, and then breaking balls. Makes your job a lot easier if you can eliminate a couple of pitches. Line drive and one hop grabbed by Roberts. And that'll do it. But the Yankees take the lead. One run on a couple of doubles. One man left on base. Let's go to the second. One nothing ends.
special hybrid vehicle of the Yankees. Here's how we started the conversation, excluding Soriano. What major league players acquired at or near the trading deadline have helped their new teams most and why? Here's one of the responses we got back. H. Feynman, one, said Ricky Nolasco to the Dodgers, 6-1 and one with a 2.20 ERA for them. A huge reason for their hot streak. Follow Yes Network and tweet us your responses using hashtag Yankees Prius to keep the conversation going. Puig might be a pretty big reason for their hot streak, too. What about Matt Garza with Texas? How has he done over there? You know what? I have not noticed that he's been great, but we'll check. I thought he'd be a huge addition for them. Orioles are hoping they get a jolt from Michael Morse, who has joined the team. So he is actually on the bench today. They traded with the Mariners for him yesterday. Adam Jones takes up and in. There's so much more that go into these trades from a player's perspective. I mean, if you're Michael Morse and you go from a not a good team in Seattle here to a pennant race. And Adam Jones gets plumped. Baltimore hoping that Morse can kind of re change his season as we take another look at the fastball that runs in on that left tricep left elbow of Adam Jones. Looking for one good month for Michael Morris couple of home runs and big spots It'd be worth the trade. It must be very odd to be traded in the middle of the season just pick up and have to move everything and join a whole new group of people that you know, a lot of them you don't know very well. Here's leaders. Ah. Well, we looked up Garza. Seven starts with Texas. Three and two, four point four four. Not great. You know, Michael, I was traded a few times during my career. Only once during the season, and went from a last place team in Detroit to a first place team in San Diego. And you have so much new energy, and you feel like you got a new opportunity playing some meaningful baseball. And it's what happened with Soriano and he's on a hot streak. Obviously the swing is there. Baltimore hoping they find the same thing with Michael Morse. You feel like a kid though in a new class where you have to get to know everybody? I mean you feel uncomfortable. You, you have a few guys that you obviously have played with before you know and you kind of cling to them to show you the ropes at the beginning. But once you get out on the field it's the same game. But you feel such another level of excitement because the games are more meaningful. Leaders with a fly ball to right center. And it's going to dunk in front of Ichiro for a base hit. That breaks an 0 for 19 slide for Weavers. Well, he will take a hit however he can get it. That ball was up in the air for a long time, and Weeders has some power. Stewart wants it up and in. It's up out over, and he gets jammed. The big swing, and Ichiro does not get a good jump. Gets caught flat-footed. Ball will fall in front of him. So a hit batter and a bloop single and the Orioles threatening first and second nobody out here in the second and Nick Marquette is up. We told you Weeders was 0 for 19 before that his last 29 games hitting 114. So now he's 15 for 98. That is a long stretch of struggle. Well, it's a tough call for Buck Showalter, manager of the Baltimore Orioles. I mean, he's, Weeders is so valuable behind the plate. As you see the numbers for Marcakis. And obviously, you'd like to get some offense out of him, but he's your everyday catcher, and more importantly, has to deal with the staff. Down 2 0. Nova's first trouble of the ball game here in the second inning against a guy, Marcakis, who had three hits in last night's game. Swinging a hot bat and ahead in the count 2 and 0. Nova, you're looking for a two seam fastball. Try to get yourself a ground ball and a possible double play. That could be it right there. There's one. And there's two. As Jones moves the third. It's such a luxury when you get in trouble if you're Ivan Nova and you can go to your two seamer, which has enough movement that you can force some ground balls. One pitch, you pick up a couple of outs. You have the possibility of working your way out of trouble here in the second inning. Well, Cake is hustling down the line, but out by plenty. 
Here's J.J. Hardy, runner on third, two outs. 95 mile an hour fastball, four strike. We talked about this during the first game of the series. Baltimore will swing the bats. They're a very aggressive club with a lot of power. They go up there swinging. Count one and one. Fly ball right field. Ichiro puts it away and that'll do it. So Noble works into and out of a jam. One runner left. We'll go to the second. One nothing Yanks. Alex Rodriguez was in the original lineup, but scratched because of flu-like symptoms. He's done very well since coming off the DL. 22 games, 280, four home runs, 10 ribbies, scored 11 runs, an on-base percentage of 359 for A-Rod. Had a base hit in RBI's last at bat in last night's game. And he was here very early today taking ground balls. And uh, so I'm taking batting practice underneath the stands, but... Guess he wasn't feeling well and it was a late scratch. So Feldman will start his second inning of work. It's one nothing Yankees. A double by Gardner, a double by Cano in the first inning. And here is Reynolds. Reynolds 12 for 38 with the Yankees, 225 overall. And it shows you what Girardi thinks. Of Reynolds because yesterday a righty started, today a righty started. And in both games, Reynolds was in the lineup. Overbay was not. The only reason Overbay got to play today is because A Rod was scratched. So they are riding the hot hand with Reynolds. Reynolds three hits in last night's ball game, six hits in his last two. Getting that front foot down a little bit earlier, not doing that double toe tap. And the results have been there. This is just a different team for Joe Girardi to manage right now. I mean, Alex Rodriguez, a late scratch. Reynolds goes to third, and you're able to put a guy like Overbay in your starting lineup, who you would assume would have gotten some of these at bats anyway. Much better bench. Swing and a miss. Reynolds down on strikes. So one down, and that'll bring up Ichiro. We showed you in the open the big home run that Ichiro had. In yesterday's game, seven home runs for Suzuki. And a 
first try. Well, you think back to last night's game, and Ichiro walked his first at bat, I think, on four straight pitches, and then went up aggressive his second time, swung at the first pitch, had two run shot. Hitter who can be aggressive at times and take some chances with that short porch in right field. And last night he was able to come through. And he swings and misses. Leaders tosses it to Davis. So strike out. Two three the put out. That's going to bring up Overbeck. Now Overbay knows that this is his chance in this game against Feldman. The next four games the Yankees will play, it'll be four left-handed starters. Overbay, 0 for his last 15, his average now at 247. The first changeup we saw from Feldman off the end of the bat, and Robbie Thompson makes a nice play. Spoke earlier of Pitts that he's trying to introduce into his game plan a little bit more. Feldman has struggled this year against teams over 500. In 11 starts against plus 500 teams, three and six with a 5-0 ERA. That is chopped to second. Roberts to Davis and a 1-2-3 for Feldman in the O's. Two of the books here in the stadium. It's one nothing Bombers. has a 686 winning percentage as a starter that's second 
among active pitchers. Lance Lynn is first with a minimum of 50 starts. Well, it really is amazing how far he has come this year, come back, being sent to the minor leagues. Now, if you're a Yankee teammate, you're thinking about him at the top end of your rotation. Very, very consistent since he came back from the minor leagues. Lincoln scoreboard, 1 0 Yankees. It'll be 8 9 and 1 for the O's against Nova. Here's Betterby. And a strike. Seventeen game rehab assignment has missed most of the year with right knee problems. Oh for five in the big leagues. And now 0 and 2. Uh, he could be a factor for Buck Showalter down the stretch here. Switch hitter with some power. We talked about the addition of Michael Morse, but better meet a proven hitter. You just wonder how long it's going to take him to get back to on top of his game after being hurt all year. Oh, nice play by Reynolds. Over to over Bay, one away. Uh, Mark Reynolds, known for his power in his big league career, is on a good stretch with the Yankees, but a nice play going to his left. Once he makes that part of the play, the easy part, throwing it across a diamond to over Bay. And a great look on Yesmo, brought to you by Mercedes Benz. Here's Brian Roberts. One and oh. So Brian Roberts pinch hitting in last night's ball game against Mariano Rivera actually hit a ball hard, nothing to show for it. Alexi Casilla got the start against CC Sabathia. Right back to Nova. For the second out. And the top of the order, Nate McClough. Orioles are seven and six this year against the Yankees. And after Sunday's game, they still have four more games left against each other. Four games in Baltimore. Yankees also in the second game of a stretch of 17 straight days playing baseball. And that's going to put some wear and tear on your bullpen as well. Tomorrow they can expand the roster so they'll get at least Preston Claiborne back. And that gives Joe some maneuverability in the bullpen. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see who the September call ups are. Obviously, Claiborne did enough during the year. He will definitely be back. He'd like some versatility on the bench, maybe. Now, these are the teams that are in wild card contention. Orioles seem like they have the toughest schedule because they're. Opponents have a 5-14 winning percentage. Yankees right in the middle. And Michael, you mentioned those 17 games in a row. That was the first thing I thought of the bullpen and how they'll be able to hold up during that stretch. McLeod hits one deep to left center. But back is Gardner. He makes the play to finish a 1-2-3 inning. For Nova and the Yankees. We'll go to the bottom of the third. One nothing Yanks.
Get a full season of live Yankee games on the go for just $29.99. And if you're an Optimum customer who watches Yes on Optimum TV, go to YesNetwork.com to get more information and subscribe now. Overcast day here in the Bronx. The Lincoln School Board. Yankees lead 1-0. It's Stewart, Gardner, and Jeter coming up for the Yanks against Scott Feldman. He's ready. That's in the outfield, so he's ready to catch a home run ball. Looks like uh, him as an older gentleman. And there's a strike to Stewart. Chris is Ofer's last 14. And he's had a much heavier workload than he could have expected. And that he's had in a long, long time. And maybe it's starting to affect him just a bit. Well, we talked about Weeders and all the innings that he has caught this year. And his offensive game has slowed down. And Chris Stewart has not played as much, obviously. But for him, the most innings he's ever caught, most games, it's going to catch up with you a little bit. Two. And Girardi has an option because Romine has been swinging the bat much, much better. But he likes the catching skills of Stewart. He likes the veteran leadership, and he gets him in there as often as he can. Still one and two. I mean, it's a little bit easier now with the lineup the Yankees are throwing out there that you don't need Stewart to hit as much as earlier in the year because you got Soriano, you got Reynolds who's swinging the bat better. Bottom line from this point forward, it's all about pitching for the Yankees. If they can solidify their pitching rotation, give themselves a chance. Ground ball to Roberts. One out. Introducing the all new 2014 GMC Sierra. Incredible thinking in the form of a truck. Visit GMC.com for details. Here's Gardner doubled inside first in the first inning came around to score on Cano's double. Feldman very deliberate on the mound. Really slows down when there are runners on base. Good breaking ball strike. That double, as we mentioned earlier, is 133rd hit most of the season. One and two. One more game with the Orioles, then the White Sox come to town for three. And then the Red Sox for four. A ten game homestand. Yankees needing to win games. They could, took care of business last night. 2-2. Two, two. Uh, it's easy when you say those games coming up, Michael, to think, okay, the White Sox, easy. Three games, three wins. And it's not going to be that easy. There can't be any letdown. With this Yankee club against some of the teams that have not had good years, you have to take care of business and win those games. Swing and a miss. The ball gets away from Weeders. Gets an angle, and he just gets Gardner. Well, let's check out the McDonald's upcoming schedule. You can see tomorrow's game on Yes, 105 start. And then the White Sox are in town, 105 on Labor Day, and then 705 and 705 on Tuesday and Wednesday. Two night games against the Red Sox Thursday and Friday, and Saturday and Sunday at 105. The Saturday game's on Fox, but Yankees extra innings after that game. So there's a lot to digest there, but we'll be all over. Here's Derek Jeter. And a strike. 
You know, I look at those White Sox games, them coming into New York, into Yankee Stadium. They have nothing to play for the rest of the year. If they come into Yankee Stadium for three games, they'll have plenty of anticipation, plenty of excitement to try to play the role of the spoiler. They're going to be ready to go. And they really hurt the Yankees in Chicago when they swept them. That, that seemed like the end of the season. But the Yankees rebounded nicely after that. Those were the first three games where Rodriguez was back. And uh, the Yankees just didn't play very well and got swept. And they can't afford to let that happen again. It's payback time. But the keys to those games is early on scoring a couple of runs because if you do that the White Sox will kind of have that feeling like we can't compete against this team and might roll over for you the second half of those games. But if you keep it close in the middle of the ball game they're going to feel like they have a shot to beat you and they'll have something to play for. The one two. And also, you don't want to get into the last part of the bullpen because they have a lot of guys that throw hard. Yeah. Jump to third. Machado throws it past Davis. And Gina will reach. So the best defensive team in baseball makes just its 40th error. Well, they are on a record pace defensively to be one of the best teams of all time and very unusual right there. The wide throw from Machado. <laughs> that could be a big error because you give Kanoa. And at bat with a runner on. Machado's done a great job playing third base, which really is in his position. Those are the errors right now. Nine ahead of the Rays. The Yankees have also had a good defensive year. But Machado was really a shortstop by trade. But they needed his bat up here. Mark Reynolds had not been playing great third base last year. They called him up. He's been everything they could have wanted. Shortstop's kind of blocked with J.J. Hardy. He's made plenty of highlight plays at third base and the strong throwing arm from down under. But sometimes when you throw from that arm angle, you lose some balls like that throw a little bit wide right. Knocked down by Davis. And he gets Cano for the final out. So no harm, no foul with the error. One man left. We go to the fourth. one nothing Yanks.
Miami. So I said, why don't you put together a Dodge Hitter Scatter Report? And I did it right in between the innings. That's, That's how, how you quick roll. I can do it. First of many all-star games. He made his first this year, and he is a doubles machine. 46 of them already. That's first in the league. And he's doing a better job of being a run producer. He's driven in runs his last five games. Has 65. We talked last night. He will become a better power hitter, but he's also going to become a better run producer as he gets a little older. Machado, Davis, and Adam Jones here in the fourth inning. It's one nothing Yankees. Machado struck out in the first inning against Nova. The big right-hander deals. Popped up. And Cano for the first out. Time for the New York State Smokers Quit Line Quiz. Call 1-866-NY-QUIZ for free help today. Who's the all-time wins leader among pitchers born in Hawaii? We'll find out. We asked that because Feldman born in Hawaii. So it's not him. Here's Chris Davis who gets plumped by the Nova pitch. Second hit batter by Nova. Oh, it's that big curveball looking to get ahead of the counter. He just spikes it down and in. Oh, gets his back knee. You ever been to Hawaii? No, I have not. Never. Have you? Yes, I have. As great as they say? Yes, it is. It could be a retirement spot. Really? Yeah. Very far away. Well, you don't need to come back for very much, right? Well, I'm just saying your kids can't visit you. That's, that's okay. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back when it warms up a little bit. Adam Jones swings and misses. I hope the three Flaherty kids are not watching this game right now. They would uh, hurt. Alyn and I talk about it all the time. Once they go to college, it's, you know, how you say, see ya. <laughs> We're out of here. The one. Oh, and two. Adam, one of two outfielders in Oriole team history to court three seasons with at least 25 home runs. The other one is the guy who's celebrating his birthday today, Frank Robinson, turned 78 today. So happy birthday to the Hall of Fame. There are some deals that are just overwhelmingly in one team's favor, and the deal that brought Jones to the Orioles from the Mariners was, was an unbelievable lopsided deal to Baltimore. I mean, the key is Eric Bedard going to Seattle. Arm got hurt, and never was the same pitcher. High fly ball. Right field. Two away. February 8th, 2008. This is the way the deal broke down. Eric Bedard goes to Seattle for those five players. And they all, I guess for except for Butler, they all contributed to yeah. the Orioles. And Adam Jones get a fixture in center field, the gold glove winner. And Tillman's been very good this year. You know what the difference is, though? Adam Jones, when he was in Seattle, was very easy to pitch to. You could pitch him inside, inner half, and he would have a lot of trouble with it. And to his credit, he's cleaned up that part of the plate, and now he's become a top-end offensive player to go along with his defense and had a, another assist in last night's ball game. An all-star center fielder. But he wasn't the finished product when he came over here. You give the Baltimore some credit for developing him and Jones some credit for getting better. Grounded to first. And stepping on the bag is Overbay. And that's going to do it here in the top of the fourth. No runs, no hits. One left. It's one nothing Yankees.
quiz. Scott Feldman's from Hawaii, but who's the all-time wins leader among pitchers born in Hawaii? How about Sid Fernandez? Is Ron Darling born in Hawaii? Charlie Wow. Huff. Wow. Both Sid and Ron were born in Hawaii. But those are the top five, the Hawaii 5-0 we call. Charlie Huff with 216, Ronnie Darling with 136, Milt Wilcox 119, El Cid 114, and Scott Feldman still pitching with 50. A lot of distractions, I guess, in Hawaii. Surfing. Here's Soriano. When we in San Diego, we got a picture of a, a Padres, uh, I guess, pre-season media guide or a magazine that had a picture of John Flaherty holding the surfboard. Big long board. You and Chris Gomez, I think. Yes. Did you ever surf or was it just a photo shoot? When I went to Hawaii with my family, we got a private surfing lesson. One of my, my good buddies, my college roommate, Bobby Gaza, has a cousin who's a professional surfer over there. Actually, you remember the guy who rode this biggest wave ever? It was recently, maybe six months ago. I don't know if you remember. They got a lot of publicity for it. His brother gave us a private surfing lesson over there. It was fantastic. How, how, how'd you do it? I did better than I thought I did. But you know who was the best surfer in the Flaherty family? It was Logan Flaherty. Really? My youngest, too. There, there's nothing to him. He weighed about 70 pounds. As Soriano goes down on strikes. But you put him up on a longboard and just took off. He could wow. walk all over that thing. It was fantastic. So one down, and that's going to bring up Curtis Granderson. Want to know? I need to get you to a luau. You'd enjoy that food, wouldn't you? A lot of Hawaiian food, cuisine. Had burgers in there? No, no, not the one I went to. Is that the one where they had the uh, the pig with the apple and Sure. Oh, see, that would turn me off. Oh, it's fantastic. When in Hawaii, do as the Hawaiians do. One and two. Feldman looked a little shaky in the first inning. The Yankees able to push a run across, but he settled down nicely. Since then, his last three starts, he has not gone deep into ball games. The ERA pretty good at 2.12. Last start against Oakland, five innings, 102 pitches, but was able to pick up the win in that game. Popped up. Shallow right. Marquette has got a late start, but makes it in time. Speaking of you in the water, John, last Sunday you uh, participated in a triathlon in Chicago, and there you are just before getting in the water. You did a great job. I mean, that's unbelievable that you've taken this up. And it's my midlife crisis. You know what? You're handling it great. All those years of trying to get ready for spring training and all these seasons, you know, I got to have something to look forward to and train for. It was a lot of fun last weekend in Chicago. Now, eight. will you continue to do this? Yeah, I think so. I think really? I'm addicted now. Wow. There are 8,000 people in the water for that triathlon. It was amazing. It is certainly a great town to finish a triathlon and, and celebrate. Well, it was probably the only Saturday night I've ever spent in Chicago where I was in bed at 10 o'clock at night. Wow. Now, Sunday night was maybe a little different story, but I was talking to Mark Reynolds in the dugout about triathlons today. He's good friends with Eric Burns, just being outfielder with Oakland and there Arizona. And he's full into them now as Mark gets hit by a pitch. He's done a couple of Ironmans, Eric Burns has, which is incredible. Wondering, but I guess it hit his shirt. Let's 
see if we can see. Tough to, to tell. tell. Pitch to Ichiro. It's outside one and up. Run of the game came in the first inning. Gardner led off with a double inside first, and then Cano doubled to right, and that drove in Gardner. That's the only blemish on the board right now. One nothing, bottom of the fourth inning. Runner on first, two outs. One pitch. Grounded to second. Roberts. And that'll do it here in the fourth. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left. We go to the fifth inning at Yankee Stadium. Yankees won, Orioles nothing, I guess. All right, so the A's now the first wild card. The Rays the second wild card. Orioles four back. Yankees four and a half back by a half. And the, the Indians also four and a half back with the exact record of the Yankees. It's getting tight. And after today, a month to go. September starts tomorrow. Hey, since 2009, Turkey Hill Dairy has been the official ice cream of the New York Yankees. In honor of the team, the dairy has two Yankees-inspired ice cream flavors. They have Bronx Farmer Sunday premium chocolate ice cream with chocolate cookie swirl and chocolate covered crunchies. And they also have pinstripe brownie blast premium vanilla ice cream with brownie batter swirl and brownie pieces. And they made those.
and John has the uh, Bronx Bomber Sunday in front of him. Marcakis hits it the other way. Is there anything better on a holiday weekend? A little ice cream? Pretty nice. Ice cream. Ball game. Surfboard. One more. One and two. Very economical for Nova. Through four innings for Nova, the curveball has been a big time pitch, a two seamer. Getting some ground balls when he needs it, and since his return from the minor leagues, nine starts, five and two, two point three four. Been in co complete control. The velocity has dipped a little bit. He's got plenty of movement to get away with that fastball, and the curveball has been fantastic. Things have gone right for the Yankees to get back into this wild card race. Soriano and his hot production at the plate of On Nova been a solid piece in that rotation. Fly ball, right center. Gardner makes the play for the first out. So one down that brings up JJ Hardy. Yesterday about Girardi lifting Sabathia after five and two thirds, and I thought CC was very diplomatic about it after the game. He said, uh, "I don't have that trust anymore. I have to earn it back." He said, "The way I've pitched, I, I get it." He said, "It's not that I'm happy about it, but I, I certainly understand. I've got to regain that trust." Yes. Could not hold up. Hardy goes down on strikes. MLB.com at that is the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At that delivers Yankees baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at that to 31826 or visit Yankees.com for details. It's got to be frustrating for Sabathia because he shows you some glimpses that he's getting back on track and then all of a sudden has a bad inning. Things get away from him a little bit. Bullpen picked him up last night, and the Yankees offensively picked him up last night. You now, Meredith talked about the bullpen, John, since August 16th. Best ERA in baseball, 1.05. 3 and 05 saves. But can they continue to give you two, two and two third innings every single day? I don't think they can, not with a stretch of 10, 17 straight games. Well, Nova becomes so important to go deep into ball games. Corota, the same thing. Two. And Andy Pettit, you would love for him to get deep in games, but that's probably not going to be the case as much. Phil Hughes. You want those numbers to continue since August 16th, a 1.05 ERA. Another good inning for Nova as he strikes out Betterby. Two more strikeouts. Another one, two, three inning. We're halfway through. Yankees one, Orioles nothing on yes.
the official truck of the New York Yankees. So Nova has been dealing, been outstanding over five. Yankee offense has managed one run against Scott Feldman. Now they'll send eight, nine, and one in the order up against the Orioles' right-hander, starting with Lyle Overbay. Lyle grounded out to second in the second, 0 for his last 16. Count one and 0. Feldman came over from the Cubs on July 2nd and as the Orioles knew they had to uh, bolster their their starting pitching. They can score runs. We told you they can field with the best of them, but they haven't gotten the great, great starting pitching. And they tried to shore up that area and then with the acquisition of Morris tried to shore up an area that's been deficient all year and that's the D8 slot for them. Watch Feldman work in this game. He's so methodical. He takes so much time in between pitches. He almost lulls you to sleep as a hitter. 88 miles an hour with a little cut. He'll throw a little curveball, an occasional changeup. But as a hitter, you know you don't have to worry about velocity. You, it's a very comfortable at bat. And next thing you know, a couple of easy fly balls, a couple of ground balls are in the fifth inning. He's only given up two hits and one run. Now Feldman attended the College of San Mateo and uh, they have a couple of esteemed alum Bill Walsh John Madden and John Wetland. Sky the other way and out of play. And to show that you don't need to take a player in the first round for that player to make it to the big leagues. Feldman in 2003 was a 30th round pick. So your scout could see something that other scouts don't see. Your development people could help him develop into a better pitcher. That's what happened with Feldman. So 30 rounds. And then he was picked. Don't you think that's what scouting is all about? I mean, any scout could look at a first round or a second round pick and you see that they obviously have a ton of talent. But to pick somebody in the 30th round, and we talked about Feldman, how his stuff is not overpowering, you really got to dig a little bit deeper and watch him, how he mix and matches. Because he's not going to impress you with the radar gun. Hit to left field. So he breaks an 0 for 16 slide with that single left. Good at bat too. Letting balls travel a little bit. Fastball out over the plate. Just blocks it off the other way. McLeod with a bid to make a great catch, but he keeps it in front on Yesmo brought to you by Mercedes Benz. We get a good look at it. Holding over Bay to a single. Now Joe Girardi has some options with the bottom of his lineup here. Chris Stewart coming up to the plate over Bay at first. Good look for a sacrifice bunt or a possibility of a hit and run. Bunts. Foul ball. Quickly from behind the plate was Weeders, but Chad Fairchild said, nope, foul ball, and he said it in a very loud voice. Fairchild's going to take a look at the ball now. Weeders trying to hang as long as he can with that bunt. We should get a great look here. The bunt straight down on home plate. Well, that's a tough call for an umpire to make. Nice shot from the overhead. Weeders comes out to the side of home plate. That's a tough call. Fairchild all over it. 
very tough call. But Orioles did not argue. Good bunt by Stewart. As Overbay moves to second, sacrifice 2 3. Here's Gardner. One and oh. There's a strike, 1-1. One, one. Gardner scored the only run of the game after doubling in the first inning. He scored on Cano's double, one out later. Gardner struck out in the third. Jeter's on deck. Two and one. Hit through the left side of the infield. Overbay will not be able to score. They'll hold him up as McLeod gets the ball in quickly. A single by Gardner, and the Yankees have runners on the corners with one out. Brett Gardner going the other way. Lyle Overbay has to hesitate just a second to make sure it's out of the reach of Hardy. Ball was hit so hard he was not going to have an opportunity to score anyway. With first and third, only one out. Joe Girardi has some options here in this fifth inning with Derek Jeter up to the plate. For two today, as Feldman chases back Gardner. Chop to second. There's one. And they turn two. Somehow they got the ball off at second base with Gardner breathing down the neck of Hardy. But a 4-6-3 double play. Right there is Gardner. Hardy gets over to first. And Jeter running hard gets double up to end the inning.
The slickly turned 4-6-3 double play. What do you think, John? Well, Brian Roberts does a great job getting rid of it quickly. It looked like Hardy was still on the bag. Gardner going in there hard with a hard slide. But a sweet double play, a great angle to see it here. If Hardy's still on the bag. Mm. Looks like he is. Now a lot of discussion with the new replay rules next year that they're worried that infielders might get hurt because a big play like that if you challenge it John and the umpire called the neighborhood play and a lot of umpires call the neighborhood play so that infielders don't get crushed well it's going to be reversed and if that call is then going to be reversed then you can't call the neighborhood play anymore it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out but a lot more pressure on middle infielders to hang in there just a split second longer. Three and zero on Roberts, so the Yankees had an opportunity to uh, give Nova a little bit more of a lead. But we go to the sixth; it's still one nothing. Nova's allowed just one hit, a single by Weaver's, a bloop single in the second inning, in front of Ichiro. And there's a strike. Michael, let's see how this game plays out. I mean, it's a, a nice pitcher's duel going on right now, but in that fifth inning, you look at that double play by Jeter, you say, okay, 4 6 3. But that was a sweet double play, not an easy double play to turn, save the run. Baltimore gets a lot of credit for not making errors this year, but that was a tough double play that doesn't get turned every day. And the 3 2. High fly ball, left field. Granderson for the first out. Nova coming all the way back behind in the count, 3 0. Oh, three strikes and gets an easy fly ball to Granderson. Keep the speedy Brian Roberts off the bases to lead off the sixth. Now here's Nate McLeod, 0 for 2, grounded to second and a fly ball to center. Count on one. This is a rare sparkling start for Nova in the day. Six previous day starts, one and three. 4.46. And Clough flies out to Branson. In night games, eight night starts for Nova, five and one, 2.41. But in August, he's won every game. The Yankees have won every game that he started his five starts, and he's three and zero with a 2.62. And in 16 career starts in August, he's 10 and 2. And that's sometimes a month where, where pitchers start to falter. They run into that wall. But uh, not the case with Nova. Here's Machado. Missed inside with the breaking ball. Machado is 0 for 2. We saw in those numbers in the month of August this year, 280 batting average against Nova. So that tells you he's been giving up some hits to work his way out of some trouble. There's a base hit for Machado. Turned around a fastball. Let's check out today's cold hard fact brought to you by Frost Brew Coors Light. Brady Anderson with 50 home runs in 96, the most ever by an Oriole in a single season. And Frank Robinson, the birthday boy today, 49 in 1966. And Chris Davis closing in on both. He has 47 this season. And Chris comes to the plate. I had an interesting discussion with, with Chris yesterday, John, and I said, obviously your goals are on winning as a team. But if you set your goal on breaking a single season home run record, how many home runs do you think you have to hit? And without hesitation, he said 62. I said, not 74. He said 62. 
He goes, Roger Maris is the last guy to hit that many home runs without any suspicion of anything. He says, and I think it's 62. And he actually said that as well during the All-Star break. And he cut, kind of brought to task by some people who told him that 75% of the players playing today think that the record is held by Bonds at 73. But Davis says, I think it's 61 and Maris. Good for him. It's good to hear an athlete actually speak up and give his opinion on what his beliefs are. The Yankees just hoping that those numbers don't rise here at Yankee Stadium during the series. They've done a good job with him throwing that pitch right there, the big curveball. Trouble recognizing it from Nova, got hit by it in his last at bat. Swings right over the top. Outside, Nova wanted that one. Snapped at the return throw from Stewart. Not angry at the umpire. I think angry at himself for missing. Well, you see Stewart setting up inside, and it comes around the plate on the outside corner. So obviously missing with the spot where he wanted to throw it. After that, in the middle of the plate, though. Swing and a miss. Got him. He strikes out Chris Davis, and another shutout inning for Nova. We go to the bottom of the six, it's one nothing Yanks. Come out to Yankee Stadium Labor Day Monday, September 2nd for a special giveaway. The Yankees take on the White Sox. First 10,000 guests, 14 and younger, will receive a limited edition Yankee Stadium exclusive Thai Beanie Balls named Rookie. For tickets, log on to Yankees.com. Visit the stadium ticket window, Yankees clubhouse shops, or call Ticketmaster at 877-469-9849. One-nothing Yankees. As we go to the bottom of the sixth, part of the Yankee order, it's Cano, Soriano, and Granderson. Cano's driven in the only run in the game. An RBI double in the first inning, scoring Gardner. Grounded sharply, the second gobbled up by Roberts. One pitch, one out. Feldman has really settled down. Brett Gardner led the game off with a double. Robinson Cano had a double to drive him in that you just mentioned, Michael. And since then, he's been on cruise control. The pitch count in good shape at 78 with one out in the sixth inning. The 
pitching well lately, but the bull, the pitch count has been inflated, and Baltimore has had to use some middle relievers. Getting the job done this afternoon. Pitch to Soriano is inside. Alfonso has popped up to Davis at first and struck out in the fourth. He does not get cheated with his cuts. One and one. You see Feldman making a little adjustment this afternoon with Soriano trying to run that fastball in on his hands. Alfonso has seen it two times and it looked like he was looking for it that last swing just fouled it off. Another one in off the plate. Two and two. Feldman deals. And the count is full at three and two. Swing and a miss. Breaking ball diving down and away for the second out. Finale of this three game set tomorrow, and the starting pitchers brought to you by Verizon Files, making life more entertaining with America's fastest, most reliable internet that's powerful. Wei Yin Chen will go for the O's against Andy Pettit. Andy was moved into this slot. Phil Hughes was moved to Monday. Our coverage begins at 12.30 with the pregame show. First pitch will be right around 107 on Yes. Granderson takes low and inside, 1-0. And oh. Curtis grounded out to second in the first, and then a fly ball to right in the fourth. Popped up. Shallow left center, and the ball falls. Granderson's going for two, he'll make it. That was in no man's land. Hardy looked at McLeod, who looked at Jones, who looked at the ball dropping. Double. We'll see off the bat here. Jones takes a step back and then comes in. Now he's looking at McLeod. I think he thought that Jones had it the whole way. And then he looks over at Jones. Obviously, some miscommunication there, and Curtis Granderson will take that double. Big swing, and it's off the end of the bat. Curtis is running off the bat, slows down a little bit around first, and then kicks it into another gear. Little gift double. We'll take it. So the Yankees have an opportunity to pad the lead with a gift double. Here's Mark Reynolds. Reynolds struck out and was hit by a pitch. Really working the inside part of the plate. Count one and zero. And even though you don't throw hard, Mike Messini say if you don't throw hard, that means you have to work the inside corner even more. And that's what Feldman's doing. Well, that was a big adjustment Mike made at the end of his career and then had that great 20 win season at the end. And that was a pitch Mark Reynolds who went back right there. Fastball right down the middle. A fastball count and let it go by. Oof. Count two and one. Been on fire of late. Three hits last night. Oh, 
Three and one. With Ichiro Suzuki on deck, we'll see what Feldman does here in a 3 1 count to Mark Reynolds. I don't expect Feldman to give in right here. He's not that type of pitcher. Whatever he throws to Mark Reynolds, it's either going to be on the corner or off and probably have a little bit of movement, either a cutter or curveball, a possible sinker. Him up right there, kind of a weak wave in the count. Now full of three and two. Feldman is actually throwing changeups to right-handers now. That's what this was, and it actually ran up and in, and completely fooled Mark Reynolds. Usually, you don't see a right-hander throw a changeup to a right-handed hitter. He gets away with it there. He also did it to Soriano earlier in this inning. Two. Low and Reynolds looks a walk. And Showalter will get his bullpen busy. And Castro, the pitching coach, will come out and talk with Felton. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. It's amazing how things can turn he gets a pop up to left field that should have been the third out. It falls in for a double then a walk and all of a sudden the bullpens up the pitching coaches out. And Feldman saying, I should be sitting in the dugout now watching my team hit in the seventh inning. If you think back to his last outing, he threw 102 pitches through five innings at 92 right here. So you wonder maybe getting a little bit tired. Troy Patton getting loose in the pen. Pitch outside to Ichiro. Found the other way. One and one. This was last night Ichiro Suzuki in the fifth inning first pitch swinging the seventh home run of the year two run shot gave the Yankees the lead that they would eventually continue to hold on to. In on the hands foul back. Likes hitting at the new Yankee Stadium, batting average over 300 with those five home runs. Count two and two. This is when Feldman really slows down when there are people on base. In the first inning, walk worked this way as well. Out of the stretch takes forever. The 2 2. High fly ball. Right center. Jones is there and will put it away for the final out of the sixth. No runs to hit, no errors, and two men left on base. We're going to the seventh inning 
a one nothing nail biter. lead 1-0. Cano's RBI double in the first inning, holding up behind the pitching of Nova. Has not walked a batter. Five strikeouts in six shutout innings. Had Gardner scored the only run. He has two hits, and he did score that run, as you can see in the first inning. But the story really has been Nova as he bounces back from a, uh, a start where he was a little bit wild, but six more innings and 11 consecutive starts, and he's tied Sabathia for the longest streak by a Yankee this season. And with Sabathia only going five and two thirds yesterday, the Yankees needed a start of length today. And so far they're getting it. And he's in great shape pitch count wise with 68 pitches. Here's Adam Jones. Ah. Pennant race baseball teams making moves. You see the Cadillac scoreboard Yankees up one nothing. And the Pittsburgh Pirates make their second big move in a week. And they get a former MVP, Justin Morneau, going to the Pirates from the Twins. Grounded to short, Jeter charges, fires, got him. There's the deal for Alex Presley and a player to be named later or cash. And uh, Morneau has had a good August, built his numbers up to 17 and 74. And... Um, he could help. He can help. Well, that jumps out at me. Those 17 home runs. We remember that we were there a couple of months ago, and he had no power going this year. His batting average was respectable, but the home run total was down. Now that he's gotten hot, you wonder if Pittsburgh gets a very productive player at the right time. He has 10 home runs in the second half of the season. And the Pirates are going for it, and I give him credit. And Morneau has nine home runs in August, so that's why those numbers are somewhat respectable. And a strike. That has got a got to pump up a team who last year made a run at it and faded late. This year they're hanging in there. And their front office is making some big moves to help them out the final month of the season. Got Marlon Bird, John Buck, and now Justin Morneau. Two and one, and they won a big game yesterday against the Cardinals. Weeder says one of the two hits in this game, a Weeder bloop single in the second, bloop to right center, and then Machado single cleanly to left in the sixth. The 2 2. Right back to Nova. 
Two outs here in the seventh. Remember to vote for the Chevy part of the game. Visit votechevy.com. Results will be revealed in the post-game show. It has been a pretty simple formula for Nova this afternoon. Two seam fastballs down. Breaking balls when you're looking for a strikeout. And throwing a lot of strikes. And because of that, the pitch count only at 75 with two outs in the seventh inning. Here's Nick Markakis. And there's a strike. Markakis wrapped into a 4 6 3 double play in the second and a fly ball to center in the fifth. Fly ball, center field. Gardner puts it away and a 1 2 3 inning for Nova and the Yankees. At the end of six and a half, it's time for the seventh inning stretch here at the stadium. Yankees won, and the Orioles nothing, but we'll stay right where we are to honor America in the Bronx. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your caps. And please direct your attention to the area behind home plate and welcome two honored guests of the New York Yankees. United States Army Sergeant First Class Maria Green who served in the Cold War in Germany, and United States Army Master Sergeant Jericho Denman, who served in Operation Iraqi Freedom. The Yankees say thank you for your sacrifice and service to our nation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please join in Kate Smith's rendition of God Bless America. Year. So many games mean so much, and uh, obviously the Yankees in sure State in a couple of those games that Bob just highlighted right there. Yesterday they picked up games on a couple of teams, and if they can beat the Orioles right here, you see the Cadillac scoreboard, they lead one nothing. John, that means they pass the Orioles, so that's one more team that they don't have to worry about that's in their rearview mirror. So if you beat the teams that you're playing, sooner or later you're going to start gaining on everybody. 
Yeah, we talked about it last night how the focus of the players has to be day by day, but they're paying attention to these games. They're paying attention to the paper every day, and if they can leapfrog a team, you just check it off the list and you're one step closer to your goal. There's Lyle Overbay. Feldman still on the mound as we start the bottom of the seventh inning. One nothing Yankees. Popped up foul and out of play. Kevin Gozman warming. You might see a lot of Gozman in September. Hard thrower out of the bullpen. And the Orioles love his arm. The 0 1. 1 and 1. Buck Showalter sending Feldman back out there for the seventh inning. The pitch count now will reach 100 with this next pitch to Overbay. That's pretty much where he's been 100 to 105 in his recent outings. Now 1 and 2. That's the breakdown. Biggest uh, count was in the sixth inning when he had to throw 20. He had to throw a lot more pitches with that lack of communication between McLeod and Adam Jones. Granderson gift double. Two and two. Looped in the left field, another base hit for Overbay. So a last minute insertion into the lineup because of A Rod's flu like symptoms. And Overbay, who was 0 for 15 coming into this game, now 2 for 3. Back to back at bats with base hits, and they're pretty much identical, just blocking off the cutters in on his hands, fighting it off the other way. Lead off base runner here in the seventh inning. Cutter in on his hands, just fight it off. Overbay has been struggling lately back to back hits and back to back at bats. Last time we had the same situation, John, in the fifth inning they had Chris Stewart bunt. Let's see if they do it here. Shot away in on the grass at third base, expecting the bunt. Overbay doesn't run well. Could be a play at second if it's not a good bunt. Chris Stewart, if you are bunting, make sure you bunt it to the first base side. Chris Davis or Feldman to field it. Runner goes. And they have him swinging away. It's a fly ball to center field. Jones makes the play. So the Yankees try to get something going there. Open up a hole in the infield and they couldn't get it done. Joe Girardi taking a chance. Everybody in the build, building, including Matt Wieters and Feldman, expecting Stewart to bunt. So he got a good pitch to hit. Just got underneath it a little bit. That's going to bring up Gardner. Pitch outside, 1 and 0. Gardner has two hits today. Doubled and scored in the first, struck out in the third, and then singled through the left side in the fifth inning. Yankees with six hits, two by Gardner, two by Overbay, one by Cano, and one by Granderson. Driven the other way, long run from McClough. Can't get there.
two and one. Joe Walter needs these wins as much as the Yankees need these wins. And you could sense, John, the tension in both of these games. Each, each pitch meaning so much. Both managers, a lot of tough decisions in a close ball game, a one run game here. Bottom of the seventh. When do you make some pitching changes? Do you try to hit and run, sacrifice bunt to get another run? And that gets Gardner. So he gets plunked, and that moves Overbay into scoring position. Well, we've seen the cutter all afternoon from Feldman in on the hands, and he gets that back elbow of Brett Gardner. Buck Showalter has some decisions to make right now. Under and eight pitches. He's handled Derek Jeter pretty easily. Ground ball to first, an error by Machado at third, and a 4 6 3 double play. Pitches as high this year, 114. He averages 101. Jeter fouls it away. Jeter's grounded to first, reached on a throwing error by Machado in the third, and then a big 4 6 3 double play in the fifth to end the first and third one out jam. I know Derek's hitting under 200, kind of hasn't found his swing since he's come back off the disabled list. These are the situations where he is at his best. A couple of runners on in a tight ball game late in the game, looking for that big swing. Give the Yankees a little bit of breathing room. That happened that I just don't understand right there. Overbay is not going anywhere with his lead off the second base. A little spin move, paying attention to him. On Weeders, I want Feldman's concentration to be on Jeter. Rounded up the middle. There's one. And Jeter hits into a second double play to end the threat. No runs to hit, no errors, and one man left on base. Roberts to Hardy to Davis. To the eighth inning, Yankees up one nothing.
about his curveball. It's been the pitch that has been there every time since his stint in the minor leagues. But when he needed a double play in the second, he gets 4 6 3 with that good sinking fastball, the curveball to Davis, another good sinker to Matt Wieters, and an easy play and a relatively easy afternoon for Ivan Nova. Seven innings, only two hits, five strikeouts, and 77 pitches to this point. J.J. Hardy leads off and he takes that breaking ball for a strike. Monday scoreboard one nothing Yankees. Well, at this point in the ball game, we're used to seeing David Robertson getting loose in the Yankee pen or being in the game but with only two hits and a shutout going. Von Nova, this is his ball game. Swing and a foul tip. Uh, Stewart could not hold on to the third strike. The O2. Another foul ball. We talk so much about the curveball being a big strikeout pitch for Nova, and a couple of 0-2 pitches to Hardy have been fastballs located well on the outside corner. You got a hitter who doesn't quite know what's going to be coming, and it looks like it's going to be the curveball going for the strikeout. Checks the swing. Fourth time this year that Nova's pitched into the eighth inning. And important because of yesterday's bullpen fest. Four relievers used. Just missed inside. Nova wanted that one. That was three curveballs in a row, and that one actually backed up a little bit. Ends up up and in to Hardy. Looks like he catches the inner half. Stewart setting up away. You see how it backs up inside. Doesn't get the call. And now the count is full. Well, tough pitch selection right here. You know the curveball's a good pitch. If you could throw it for a strike, Hardy has plenty of power. Could be hunting the fastball. And Hardy walks. That is the first walk issued by Nova. He's had he had hit two batters so far. We well, got to keep it here after the last out for the WB Mason post game. Bob Lorenz and Jack Curry are back in the studio with highlights and the latest on the pennant races around baseball. Plus, Meredith Morakovitz gets the team's reaction and Joe Girardi's manager's report as well. It's the WB Mason post game. It's only on this. It looked like Joe Girardi was not real happy with this call by Chad Fairchild behind the plate. From the side, it's below the knees. Better meet the designated hitter. You would not expect him to be laying down a sacrifice bunt in this situation. David Robertson scurrying in the bullpen to get ready. Grounded to Jeter. There's one. And there's two. A 6 4 3 double play. Well, we talked about Baltimore turning a tough double play. Now the Yankees do it. Nice backhand by Jeter. The good feed to Cano. And the flip across the diamond. Tough play just to get to it. Good feed. And again, Ivan Nova, when he needs a ground ball, the two seamer and the ability to get out of a play with one pitch. 
watching it develop. He loves it. Here's Brian Roberts. Right back to Nova. Eight shutout innings by the Yankee right-hander. Outstanding. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. You think he's pumped? One nothing Yanks. Brought to you in part by your Troy Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Troy Honda dealer for great deals on the 2013 CRV. By Turkey Hill, the official ice cream of the New York Yankees. And by the experienced Buick lease. It's a new lease on luxury. Boy, Yvonne Nova walking off that mound at that point told you how much this game means to him and to the Yankees. Hyundai scoreboard. Yankees lead 1-0 as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. And they're going to see a new pitcher. Scott Feldman gave them seven strong, and they turned to their left-hander, one of the three in the bullpen, Troy Patton. Three lefties in the bullpen for Buck Showalter. Quite a luxury. We get a look at Patton here in the eighth inning. Robinson, Cano, Soriano, and then Granderson, two lefties this inning. Boy, Feldman did a nice job, too. Seven innings, only giving up that one run on six hits. And that is officially the call to the bullpen brought to you by AT&T. Now speaking of the bullpen John. Let's manage a little bit here. Ninth inning coming up Nova low pitch count. Shut out. Is he pitching the ninth inning for you two hits he's pitching the ninth inning. This is his ball game. You got the greatest closure in the history yes, of the I, world I, out there. I understand that but this is an opportunity. More importantly for a complete game victory but also to give your bullpen a rest. Now, if you're going to warm up Mariano Rivera, might as well put him in. Because, you know, if he can get a day here, it would be fantastic. And I love the emotion of Ivan Nova walking off the mound. And how many times if you throw eight shutout innings, you know Mariano's coming in behind you. Well, in this case, it's not a certainty. Good chance he could go back out there and finish this up. The two on. That one is driven deep to right field. There it goes. See ya. Insurance. Two nothing Yankees. Robinson showing no ill effects of being hit by that pitch up in Toronto. Had a good night last night. Double and an RBI in the first inning, and now his 25th bomb of the year. Manager Buck Showalter not wasting any time making a pitching change. Here it is. 
Slider middle in and he hammers it to right field. Well, Soriano coming up after this home run. Showalter's going to go to a right-hander. Two nothing Yankees. Stay here. on 15th place on the Yankees franchise list. Next up is Roger Maris and a big insurance blow for the Yankees as they double their lead. And now they face a young hard throwing right hander Kevin Gosman. Well you see he's pitched out of the bullpen. He has had five starts and you're right a hard thrower. 26 strikeouts and 33 and a third. Pitching out of the bullpen at this point of the year for Baltimore. And he'll face Soriano, who is 0 for 3. Grounded to third, Machado gets Soriano for the first out. Let's take a look at that Cano home run on Yes View. It's supposed to be a breaking ball away. It stays middle in. As good as it gets right there for Robinson Cano. Here's Granderson. He's one for three. Doubled his last time up. There is no one warming in the Yankee bullpen, so it certainly looks as if Nova is going to try to complete this game. Well, it's always a tough decision, but Robinson Cano just made it a little bit easier with that bomb. And the Yankees another insurance run. You'll probably see Mariano start to get loose a little bit, but probably be told to just go nice and easy. If you can get him a day off, might help you out down the stretch. As Granderson goes down on strikes, won't be easy as you've got to face McClough, Machado, and the Majors home run hitter. 47 home runs leads the Majors. Chris Davis will be third man up. Reynolds. Count on one.
99 miles an hour with that fastball. Who has a bright future, had some starts, it didn't go all that well, kind of trying to find his way at the big league level, pitching out of the bullpen now. The one two. 98 foul back. Swing and a miss blew it right by him. An impressive relief performance by Gosman. We're going to the ninth. Yankees lead 2 0. And Ivan Nova is going to come out and try to finish it. Mariano softly tossing in the bullpen, but this is Nova's to finish. Only complete game in his career, also against the Orioles on July 5th. He comes into this inning throwing 89 pitches, 57 strikes, 32 balls. And he faces the top of the Oriole order with a 2-0 lead. And there's a strike to Nate McLeod. The 0 1. 1 and 1. If you're Von Nova, you'd love to keep that same rhythm you've had for eight innings, but this ninth inning, he knows it's a little bit different going for the complete game. That's what you don't want to see some fastballs elevated. Ball down, use that good movement you've had all afternoon. Keep this guy off of the bases. Yankees have done a great job in two games. He's 0 for 8. Count 2 and 2. Good take right there. Baltimore's been swinging over the top of that curveball all afternoon. McLeod be able to recognize it. Machado on deck. Big pitch. A 3 2 count here to lead off the ninth. Nova knocks it down, finds it, fires. Not in time. Pulled all the way off the bat. What does Girardi do with Machado coming up as the tying run? 
And you want to be a big league manager, you got a tough decision right now. He makes the pitch, a 3-2 sinker off his glove. He just can't find it. And then he rushes a little bit with the throw from down under. Been seeing these ground balls all afternoon. A tough break for Ivan Nova. They are going to give Nova an error. The throw had beat him. No, no, now they turned it into a hit. They changed it on the scoreboard. So it's a base hit from a cloth. Machado fouls it away. Mm. Very close. Speed is a big part of McLeod's game. 29 stolen bases. I would be shocked if he's running here with Machado up and Davis on deck in a two run game. See how they play it. Own two. Machado struck out in the first, popped the second in the fourth, and singled in the sixth. And Davis on deck. Fly ball. Granderson will make the play, one away. And now here's Chris Davis and 47 home runs. I would think this would be the tough decision for Girardi with Mariano out in the pen. Looks like he's ready. Nova has done a good job with Davis. Couple of strikeouts and hit him with a curveball that bounced and then got his back knee. A ball game right here. Fastball strike still has some zip on the heater, 94 miles an hour. He's got some velocity, but he also has that movement. That was a good movement down and away. Six for 20 with a couple of home runs. Davis has been baffled with that curveball all afternoon. Count one and one. That was the worst curveball Ivan Nova's probably thrown all afternoon. It just spun and it hung up and away. This is not the man you want to make a mistake to with your breaking ball. Count one and two. Good adjustment. Curveball up and away that spins, and then you come back and you make sure it's going to be down and in. Stewart keeps it in front, and again, Davis not picking it up and swinging right over the top. Fastball away, two and two. Crowd of 42,836 on a Saturday afternoon in New York City. Jones is on deck. With Chris Stewart behind the plate, you know if he throws a good curveball, you're probably going to have a positive result with another strikeout. 2 2. High fly ball, right field. Ichiro backing up, and he makes the play on the warning track for the second out. Let's break that down pitch by pitch, John. Well, the biggest at bat of the ball game for the Yankees and Ivan Nova, and we'll look at the pitch by pitch. First pitch sinker for a strike. Bad curveball. And he comes back with a real good one. Down and in, swing and a miss. Fastball away, misses, and then comes back with the break ball again. Gets away with it. He didn't bounce it. Down and in, and Ichiro has a little bit more room before the right field wall. One more to go for Nova. As the dangerous Adam Jones steps in. Line drive, right at Cheater, and the Yankees win 2 0.
A complete game shutout for Ivan Nova. The youngster stepped up and provided a big time, big league, big win performance for the Yankees. Well, we talked about it early on. You got to win this ball game, and you want to give the bullpen a day off. And Ivan Nova does that and more. What a ball game for him. Yankees needed a win. They get it, and the guys walking out of the bullpen get an afternoon off. Great job by Ivan Nova. And an RBI double for Cano. That was in the first inning, and a home run for Cano in the eighth inning, and that's the only offense in the game as Nova pitches a three hit shutout. Stick around for the post game show to find out who's today's Chevy player of the game. So now the Yankees have moved ahead of the Orioles, jumped one of those teams that they have to worry about, and uh, they continue to try to make up ground in the wild card race. And here's the final out. Comes right at Adam Jones, a line drive to Derek Jeter, and now it's time to celebrate if you're a Bon Nova. Mariano knew, okay, I got a day off. And he walks leisurely in from the bullpen, and the Yankees have themselves a 2 nothing victory. They've taken the first two games of this three-game set against the Orioles and the first two games of this 10-game homestand. And a big, big star in this game is Nova, and he's downstairs with Meredith. Thanks, Michael Levine. Nine scoreless innings. What allowed you to be so effective? Uh, you know, I was attacking the try zone all the time, and, you know, Follow my catcher. He got, you know, really good plan of what we're going to do and things that we did today. You're not a guy that always shows a ton of emotion on the mound, but in that eighth inning when they turned that double play after you issued the walk to Hardy, what was going through your mind? You know, it's a big game. Oh! I bet you didn't think you were getting one of those today, huh? Well, the first one, the first one. And <laughs> besides, it's really cold. It feels so good. You know, um, it's an important game for us and you know, you got to go out there and do the best that you can. So, uh, you know, the emotion is always there. Sometimes you check it out. You look at this, the way they had to use the bullpen yesterday. How much of it was in the back of your mind? Look, I need to give this team a little bit of distance and give those guys a break. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do all the time I go out there, you know, I'm trying to do my best and, you know, trying to go as far as I can. And you mentioned the fact that this is such a big win. How good is this team feeling about itself right now? Good, good. We're playing really good baseball, and uh, you know, we just got to keep doing it. Yvonne, thanks for the time. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Michael and John, send it back to you. All right, thank you, Meredith, and thank you to Yvonne Nova. So the Yankees win this one 2-0 yesterday, a slugfest today, a pitcher's jam that resulted in a Gatorade shower for the starting pitcher. You don't see that often, cooling down Yvonne Nova, who was red hot on the Saturday afternoon.